Good morning. Good morning. My name is Navy Counselor First Class Franco. I am the District Chaplain Recruiter for the U.S. Navy, and I am the recruiter, Chaplain Recruiter for Dr. Tamara Pierre. Will the guests please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance and the National Anthem. Pastor Garth Dutton. Lady Melanie Dutton. Ensign, United States Navy, Research Sesh. Lady Samira Angrand. Lady Suri Pierre. Chaplain Candidate, Programs Officer, CCPO, Dr. Tamara Pierre. Ladies and gentlemen, let us pray. Father, we thank you for the life of Dr. Tamara Pierre. We thank you for the grace and favor you have given to her and the calling to serve our nation. We ask you to please continue to guide her and help her in her new assignment as a United States Naval Ensign. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Distinguished guests, the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Parade the colors. You may be seated. At this moment, I will provide a brief description of the CCPO program that Dr. Tamara Pierre is part of. Basically, while in the program, candidates are commissioned as naval officers and receive on the job training under the supervision of Navy chaplains. The program offers unique opportunities for students to receive military training and experience while discerning a call to naval chaplaincy. Upon graduation and completion of academic requirements, they become a fully-fledged chaplain. 
We are thrilled that Dr. Tamara Peer is part of this amazing program. Please give it up. Ladies and gentlemen, the presiding officer, Ensign, United States Navy, Richard Sesh. Dr. Tamara Pierre, please come forward. He will now preside the oath of office to Dr. Tamara Pierre. True faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservations, or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office of the Navy, which I am about to enter. So help me God. Now, Ensign Tamara Pierre, would you like to provide some remarks? I got it. Your remarks. Good morning, church. Good morning. Um, I'm thankful to be here today um, and to share in this um, the commissioning service of me today with being an ensign in the United States Navy. The phrase starting from the bottom now we're here is really a way to pave it forward. Um, coming in where I have HM1 Legrand met me at MEPS and helped me get where I am today. I'm thankful for all my unit at NMRTC Jax. Thank you so much for your support. Um, mom, dad, sister, sibling, cousin, everyone, the church, I thank you so much. Um, but one thing I want to let you guys know is that this Afro-Caribbean woman has made it to the United States Navy, and I'm thankful for my children and always pushing me forward, Jeremy and Zori, and also I'm thankful for the sailors, chaplain, Navy personnel I encountered on my journey. Most importantly, I thank God, I praise God, and I am forever grateful for the opportunity he has given me to trust in him. As God abides in me, I am able to see the fruition of his love for me. Take charge, ladies, gen gentlemen, sailors, and officers, hoo <laughs> The pinning. Now, your special uh, guest will provide you with the color device. The cross on her collar represents her faith, and the ensign bar, her rank. Please come forward.
the silver dollar salute. It is an honored tradition, a silver dollar to the first enlisted member who salutes him or her. The exact origin of the custom is arguable, but it probably began before the United States Armed Forces were organized. British regiments stationed in colonial America brought with them a few customs that were retained by the newly formed American Armed Forces. One status symbol highly sought by newly commissioned British officers was to have a servant assigned to them. The servant was normally an enlisted man who was responsible for ensuring the officer's kit, dressed and filled uniforms, and personal equipment were always serviceable. The enlisted man was also responsible for teaching the officer the ship's history, tradition, and customs. This custom continued to grow with the British military and the newly formed American units. American second lieutenants in 1816 received a monthly base pay of $25, a $3 ration allowance, and a $1 for an enlisted advisor. This advisor space was later discontinued, but the responsibility for teaching the newly commissioned officer continued. The present day tradition of giving a silver dollar for the first salute it is thought to have its roots in this relationship. Hospital corpsman, first class, Negron, please come forward. And salute. Ready. About face for march. What is a mustang? Mustangs are wild animals. Although they can be tamed and saddle broken, mustangs can be unexpectedly revert to old habits and need to be handled carefully. By the same token, a mustang was formerly wild and free animal, wiser, capable, and have better survival instincts. The mustang can, be take, can take care of itself when things, get, when things get tough, thriving on rough treatment. You can easily see the parallel between the, uh, the horses and naval officers. The term mustang is used in a complementary sense most of the time. A Mustang naval officer is by appearance, yet in the minds of the top brass, they are enlisted technicians at heart. Pastor Garth Dottin, please. Aren't we excited today? We could put our hands together for one of our own. It was a while ago that she made a decision to transition from one area of the military to the other. And of course, we all supported her in her desire and her calling. The most important thing that you must remember Chaplain, is that God has called you. No one else has called you except for the Lord. This specific ministry is one that is unique and is very special. Why? Because God is entrusting you to care for those whom he calls his own. There are men and women who serve this country on a daily basis greatly. And now you are called to serve them, to be there at every stage of their life. God is entrusting you, not only with the care of those in the service, but God is entrusting you with a flock. Jeremy and Zuri, as your children, God expects for you to care for them. 
Ministry is one of those things where we are called by God and can take up all of your time, and then your family is left with the scraps. Please remember, as God has called you first to serve him, that the service is first to your flock, your family. Don't forget them. Don't leave them by the side. But know that as you serve this country, as you serve your God, that you must also care for your family. As a church, we wholeheartedly support you. We love you, and we wish you all the best as you continue to follow the will of God on your life. I stand here with these men and women who serve this country to acknowledge and also support you, knowing that God has been the one who called you to this thing, that no matter what you have been through in the past, it is all erased, because God is now entrusting you to do, to do his work wholeheartedly. Follow the command of God. Trust him. Know that he will never abandon you. No matter what comes your way, and indeed some things will come your way, but know that God, if he can bring you to it, he will bring you through it. Amen. Our God is faithful. Continue to follow him. And the most important thing is that when it's all said and done, and this world is all burnt up and over, know that God has entrusted us with his precious gift, and he has called us to a place that we will be able to be with him forever. Continue to be faithful. God bless you. As a church today, we're going to call upon our first elder who's going to have a word of prayer to close this part of the service. Let us pray. Father God, we are so grateful for the opportunity <clears throat> to have witnessed this transition in the life of Dr. Pierre. Father, we know that you have brought her a long way in the span of about a, in about a year. Her life looks different now than it did just a year ago. We put her life and her career in your hands. We know that the Navy values honor and courage. So Father God, we ask that you give her the courage to always stand up for what is right. Give her the courage to represent you in every uh, difficult place that she finds herself in. I ask that you will give her the courage to always do what you have called her to do. We ask, we know that you will uh, give her the strength as well to continue to honor you in everything that she does as she continues in, on this journey of chaplaincy. Father, we just ask that you will give her your ultimate protection wherever she may be deployed, wherever you may have her stationed, we ask that you will uh, give her that protection that she needs from all of the forces that may seem to pivot her from her path that you have set before her. We know that you have assigned uh, military personnel to be her guard, but we trust her hands, we trust her life in your hands, Father, right now. We ask that you will enlarge her territory uh, as she continues to grow, allow her to uh, be able to impact more and more people. We don't know where this path may lead. It may lead all the way to the halls of Congress, Father God, as you've done for Chaplain Barry Black. But Father, we ask that wherever her territory is, that it will be fruitful, that she will be a blessing to those that she comes in contact with. And we ask that you will continue to guide every step of her life, both professionally and personally. This one I pray in the name of, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Elder. Thank you, Dr. Tamara Pierre, now Ensign. This concludes the commissioning ceremony of Ensign Tamara Pierre. Please give it up for her.